Greetings, ladies and Madam Johnson. Welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called The Traveler, written by Hylian Hero 71 That's what we called it. The Traveler Object. After all, that's what it did. It was found adrift between stars by a reconnaissance vessel on some unknown journey. It was artificial, clearly, but its source of power was long since dead. Our ship picked it up, the scientists of our society excited beyond belief, proof that other life existed. This find would go down as a legendary event, once we finally had it in the hands of our greatest minds. The traveler began to unfold its mysteries to us. It was clearly a probe of some form, though the technology was far behind anything even we would have used. It was also old, very old. We could hardly say how many long millennia it had been wandering before it found it. Far enough that tracing its flight path to a point of origin was impossible. Space was too vast, and the uncountable anomalies and objects within could have affected it unpredictably. The things that could be learned from its construction and function were immeasurable. But it was nothing, nothing when compared to the disk. A circular disk of solid gold with symbols along its surface. It was actually a container, and inside was another disk with many grooves as well as a needle. Our scientists pored over the disk and its cover for days, trying to discern the meaning. The inner disk was not only covered with grooves, but at its center was a series of glyphs, no doubt the language of its makers. We hoped our translators could decipher it, but we would need an audio sample. It was a data storage device of some kind, that much was obvious. The problem was that it was an analog system. Fortunately, the makers seemed to have known that. Once we discovered the codes for time using the transition of the depicted hydrogen atom, we began to learn how to use the disk. It was as to be spun with an included needle placed into the grooves. There was a map of some sort as well, using stars, but sadly they were likely so far away that we couldn't find them. The images also directed us in assembling a video readout, which was constructed after much trial and error. At last, with tentative excitement and lofty expectations, we began to rotate the disc at the denoted speed and place the needle on it. To say that it was an incredible sight and sound was an understatement. The first image to appear on our rudimentary screen was a simple circle, proof that we had rigged it correctly, which was enough to elicit a cheer from the entire research team. But what followed was an even more incredible as a voice began to speak, the first alien voice our species had ever heard. It took several replays of the beginning before the translators got the hang of what he was saying, but soon we could hear it. We didn't know what a secretary general or a United Nations was, but as he spoke, we knew we had to find out. The speaker's message was one of peace and hope. Everything that we had dreamed of hearing, these humans of Earth, were the only thing anyone in the scientific scene wanted to know of at that moment. As the audio began playing, greetings in dozens of languages, images began to show across the screen. They told us everything about the species their system, their star, their planets, and almost everything about their homeworld. We were surprised when we saw them. Their forms are strange, but they looked so interesting. Soon the languages turned to music, and we were all entranced by the beautiful sounds. For a long time the disc played, giving us so much information that it would take years to even begin sorting. And then it ended. Our brief glimpse into the world of the humans was over. The last image in the disc was a message written in their language. Though it took many weeks and a great deal of effort, we were able to translate it using the audio of it being spoken. It was a message of the leader of those who launched the Traveler, expressing his hope that his people survive to meet us and join us. As we read it, there wasn't a single scientist in the room with a dry eye. Our culture was completely changed by the finding of the disc. Knowledge of another species was not as divisive as some expected, and almost everyone wanted to meet them. The biggest change was the music. So many people were inspired by the disc after it aired. In fact, 
One of its songs was so unheard of to us that it started an entirely new genre. Eventually, we realized that no matter the distance, our curiosity could not be sated unless we met them. Yes, it had been a millennia since the launch of the Traveler. And yes, we barely had an idea where they were. But that stopped no one. As I stood staring at the ship that was going to find our new friends, I was ready. It might be a one-way journey, but if the Traveler could make it, so could we. It would take years, even at top speed. But I knew that we could do it, and so did many other scientists. It only seemed proper to name our ship after the object that had revealed so much to us. The final image in the disk had shown us the Traveler's true name, and we had named our own ship after the same memorable word, Voyager. Story number two, Pursuit, written by Rosie013. Kay was many things, strong, fit, healthy, and way too young to die. As she forced her four legs to take just a few more steps away from her pursuer, she thought back to what had started her living nightmare. Nervousness, unfamiliar faces in an unfamiliar place, and a new friend. Well, what she thought had been a new friend, as her heart pounded hard in her chest, she was beginning to rethink her evaluation of that particular smiling face. Such a strange creature, bearing teeth as a supposedly friendly gesture. Another clue to her horrid fate missed in the uncertainty of the moment. At the time, Kay was simply grateful to have made a new friend. Someone who seemed like they knew their way around these parts. A game, they said, a little bit of fun and a chance to explore. The other newcomers had nodded along dumbly, caught up in the predator's rhetoric as much as she had been. And why not? There was safety in numbers, after all. Another lie. It hadn't taken long before she'd been singled out as the weakest of them. Not the slowest, but certainly the least agile. The others had ducked down side corridors or made hard turns that a little human couldn't, or at least didn't bother trying to copy. The sounds of footsteps, not her own, interrupted her thoughts, louder even than the strong thumping of her heart. Kay would have to do something fast, or it would be the end of the line for her. Her natural tan fur would do nothing for her concealment away from the golden yellow plains of her homelands. But perhaps hiding out of the line of sight might work. The human's predatory gaze was Ford's army, far more narrow than her own species' view. Yes, break the line of sight, then disappear. As if the universe conspired with her, a badly placed stack of items loomed ahead. One gentle nudge as she raced past, headed collapsing onto the floor behind her fleeing form. Success. The human's manic laughter cut off with a noticeable uh, sound as it hit the deck while still at full speed. That was far too close for comfort. It must have been nearly in grasping distance when it fell. Kay fought hard to resist the urge to look back and harder to push down the pang of guilt in her gut. All she could do was carry on with the plan and hope it hadn't injured itself. That would only make it angry. The options for concealment weren't great, but something would have to be better than nothing. With no time to lose, Kay threw herself flat behind the nearest cover. Not a second too soon, either. The human appeared nearby, as though its momentous fall was of no hindrance in the slightest. Kay fought the urge to shiver. For such a small being, the human's determination and relentlessness was outrageous, impossible, even. It took a few great breaths of air and turned around and took off at full speed, its feet loudly slapping the floor with every step. As the noise faded, Kay took a moment to give thanks to the great herd for being spared. Quietly, she would have a chance to slip away unnoticed. She set up to double-check her surroundings and came face to face with her pursuer. It had been a trap. Kay had played dirty by tripping it, and it had responded in kind by only pretending to leave. The human, its face inches from her own, bared its teeth victoriously, thick ropes of drool visible in its maw. This was it. The end for her. There would be no escape while she was off her feet, and the human was far too close to let her get away again. It reached down and almost whispered, Tag, you're it. End of story. Or Boom of Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Bushmaster 177, 
Henry the Red, Caspar Arnholtz, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Elijah Silvercross, Dragzoon WRE, and Severin Cerberus. Thank you very much.